aerospace industry. My mother worked for a doctor. And so, you know, on the outside, everything looked just normal, but nobody really knew what was going on behind closed doors. My father was actually a Satanist high priest, so he um, did all kinds of evil things. He sexually assaulted me. He took me to satanic rituals. My father actually used me as a baby breeder, which means I was impregnated to carry a child so that the Satanists would have a baby to sacrifice to the devil in their satanic rituals. As soon as I was able to have a baby, I was pregnant. The abuse in Nancy's home continued throughout her adolescence. Her babies were delivered by midwives and there was no record of their births. By her late teens, Nancy knew she had lost 10 children to satanic sacrifice. And so if I were out of school for weeks or months on end, my parents could call the school and there was no big deal. There was never an investigation. However, back when she was eight years old, an elderly neighbor befriended Nancy and invited her to church. My parents let me go because they were doing a Olympic type event where kids were competing and playing. So she took me to that meeting and it was really awesome to me because at eight years old, uh, one of the ladies there preached the gospel to me. She shared with me who Jesus was. And that very day, in that very moment, I knew that was the truth. At age 18, she married the first man that came along to escape her abusive upbringing. When her marriage fell apart one year later, she began to lead a promiscuous lifestyle. But I became pregnant at 21 years old, and I was alone. So a friend offered me a solution, and I had an abortion. After the abortion, the guilt and shame of her decision, and a flood of traumatic childhood memories sent Nancy running back to the church. I really loved God in my heart, but I didn't really know how to have that walk with Him. So I joined a church. I began to read the Word of God. I began to really pursue a relationship with my Heavenly Father. Um, as I began to try to walk that out, there were all these stumbling blocks at times. It felt like there was a wall or a ceiling between God and I. There was a lot of fear in my life, a lot of anxiety in my life. I couldn't really ever understand why God would love me or what His love could do for me. And I remember visiting a church on Valentine's Day. They were preparing the elements for communion. And I was getting a little nervous on side because in the natural, I was forced to drink human blood in the satanic rituals. So the blood seems so crazy to me. But I heard the Lord speak to me and He said, if you will drink of my blood and eat of my body, I will heal you from everything the enemy has done to you. So I took communion and everything changed and I became one whole person. God did it in a moment. After taking communion, the Lord also led Nancy through a process of forgiving her father. The next time she saw him, he was on his deathbed. He was in ICU. They didn't think he could speak to me. And yet, he sat up in the bed. He sat up in the bed, and he repented to me. Well, I just lost it. I, I just totally lost it. And I just looked at my father, and I said, You know, Dad, all I want to know is if you know Jesus. And he said, he looked at me and smiled, and he said that he had just said the sinner's prayer with a neighbor who was a pastor. And I just had tears flowing down my face and I said um, the only thing I want is how I need to hear you say it and so my father said the sinner's prayer with me and about 60 seconds later he died and he went to heaven today Nancy is an advocate for abused and neglected children in the court system she has also helped start orphanages in five different nations and travels the world to share her story and minister deliverance. I'm free. I feel so free. I feel so light. I feel so happy. And God's allowing me to be a part of setting other people free. You know, I just want to say there's power in the blood of Jesus.
and the blood has never lost its power, and it will never lose its power. Amen. What you just saw is basically what God tells us in his word. First John 4, 4, you are from God, little children, and over, overcome them. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. Scripture says that the little g, God, Satan, is the one who's pulling the strings. But who's greater? God. And no matter how far somebody has had their background, their life, their mind twisted, even by Satanists, God could still reach in and make him a new creation. Even the people who did the dirty deeds, like her dad. That's how powerful God is. That's who we serve. And that's how powerful the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and his death on the cross. That's what we need to speak up. Because you want the wickedness to stop? We preach Christ. We speak up against evil and wickedness whenever it rears its ugly head, wherever it is, as Christians, but we share the gospel. Because even those people, Christ can save. And what I liked about that is, if you notice on her testimony, how long was she going to church services before it clicked? She said about two years. Which means she was going to people who we do know that are a part of this rotten satanic behavior. We still need to share Christ with them too. What did Jesus say? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. That's the kind of church we need to be. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we love you and thank you so much for our study tonight. And thank you, God, for once again demonstrating, even seeing the depths of horrid wickedness and evil. You're so far and above beyond that. Your power, doesn't matter what they do. As we've said many times before, Satan is, he's not even the hair on the back of the flea compared to you. Your love, your power, your holiness, your majesty, the depths of your forgiveness, what you really accomplished for us, Jesus on the cross, the power of your blood. You really can save anyone. They would just call upon your name. That is so awesome. It's amazing. And you give us the ministry of reconciliation. You call us ambassadors for you because that's the message we can declare to this wicked world system. No matter what you've done, no matter how far you've gone, no matter what's happened to you, no matter what you've been a part of, Jesus Christ can make you whole and make you new. God, as Paul said, may it be true of us, may we never be ashamed of the gospel and may we never get sidetracked. This is why we're still here. This is why the rapture has not happened. There's still souls in need of saving. And that's why every day we need to be prayerfully looking, maybe even with the wanna, with these kids. We don't know their background. Maybe the people who's been joining us for services, we don't know their background. But help us to be sensitive to the leading of your spirit, God. That you would use us. That if they're in need of saving, that we would share your good news like that lady did with the girl early on and just declared the gospel and let you do the work. May that be true of us. May we not waste one opportunity. But please continue to bless this study to these lives that belong to you. We ask all this in your wonderful name. In Jesus